You worked the first plate, right? Yeah. Did you feel like you were in the slot? After um, after he talked Bill, to you, Bill gave me an adjustment. I was able. I thought I was. Able I never to. looked at you from behind or like even from down there where I could really see, but it, just from the side, it looks like you're behind the catcher, like where you're stepping. Did yeah. You, so you felt that? I felt that. Okay. Yes. And then I, and then once you and you made the adjustment. Up and, and you move up, and I was I felt I was in the slot. I was able to see that low outside pitch. Okay. And then also we made an adjust. He made an adjustment with my back leg, dropping it back a few, a couple inches, just so I was able to get my head height just a little, little bit lower. Little bit lower, yeah. Gotcha. I mean, you look you look good. Stance is good. Just you know, slots pri slots the priority. Yeah. Get in there. And the one thing he, he also, when the catcher moved inside, I. I'm, I set up my spot and I, and I was able to work a little bit higher mm -hmm. with that. So that's good. I think I, I think there was one, there was a one inside corner pitch. I was and you saw it well. I saw it well. Good. In the past, that's in my normal stance. I wouldn't have been able. To, I wouldn't have blocked out on that. Gotcha. Did you see what happened on that pickoff? Did someone, did someone tell you at some point, stay locked on the pitcher to see if he box? Is that why you do that? All right, well, do that, but don't do it to the point where you're just staring at a guy who's standing on the mound. At that point, he's not doing anything. See what you need to see, but then you got new information that needs to be seen. Good. Hey, make one right here, big come on. Where's your next possible play? Wait. Yeah, no, first base. Okay, where do we want to take that from? Get yourself out there. Yeah, outside. Once that ball gets through, we got it's a regular base hit. Now, the timing was a little bit off because of what, how it happened, but you still had time to cross that line and get out there. If, if he rounds and they throw back in, that's you got to get back over there. going on third base umpire we got to signal that I disagree I, I think he just dropped it hold on let's ask him hey shortstop did you drop that on purpose you just dropped it right okay Third base umpire, third base. When you're in the standing set, don't have your hands on your hips. Down here. Yeah, just comfortable. Hey, think comfort. You should look, you should look like you're like comfortable being out here, not like you're forcing yourself into an awkward position. First base. Hey, I'm going to take you out. I just want to talk to you about that. So again, we got to fix your body so that your mind can work. So it was this and then this, right? Just slow it all down. Allow yourself to read the ball from a stationary position. You see it? Okay, so let's, let's say that that play developed in the same way, but our right fielder was closer, so he's going to now make a diving catch. How many steps out on that ball are you going to get? Maybe one or two. Yeah, one, two, three. So, the, the initial reaction to step that way isn't gonna improve your position. I would much rather stand right here, see exactly what's gonna happen as far as whether he's gonna make a play on it. And then, now I'm out. This is out, okay? Just the same as two more steps would be out. And you're not improving your position to see it, but you're giving yourself time to read it, slow the game down, understand where your responsibilities are. Okay, the ball's gonna drop in front of him. Boom, I'm right back here without having wasted that step out there. And the other thing that that step did was it gave your plate umpire a bad read because he's not sure. Right. So he has to come up here now a little bit too, which wastes time for him moving toward third base if he needs to. So just, I mean, it sounds silly, but when you're standing here, just boom, practice. 
Okay, I'm reading from that position. Okay. That's, I mean, that's what we do at umpire school. Sure. I'm glad you said that. What information are you gaining from watching the throw? You're seeing voluntary release. The release has already happened. Right, right. Okay. Uh, to me, that's a that's something that was popular for a little while, and and some guys started to do it, and and some people are still on that kick. Mm -hmm. But you're it's you're they trying to show you're trying to play. show that you know that you need to watch voluntary release, but there's no information that happens once the ball is thrown. Okay. So use your eyes, like he said, okay. two sounds. He's gonna be out. I, I look up to the glove. I see what happens with the glove. Okay, I have voluntary release. I make my call. Okay. Watching the ball travel across the infield is just, it's, it's eye wash. It's okay. showing off to the supervisor to say, oh yeah, I was watching the voluntary release. If, if someone knows what they're, they're doing, mm -hmm. they're gonna see what your head does as the play happens. Okay. You don't need to show them that you're watching the ball. Okay. Okay. There is a scenario, at least in my opinion, we're gonna wanna follow him. When that pitcher's coming over to cover first base, right. he's got the base. My eye is going to travel with him a little bit. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, that one, I'm 100% with you. But, but like, you know, what I'm talking about, obviously, is locked in, boom. And we're just going through our progression of steps here, right? Mm -hmm. Two sounds, puts on the base, ball in his glove, voluntary release. Now he's out, right? Okay. At that point. It's, you know, oh, okay. it's safe, and I'm going to start heading that way. Four. Not bad, not bad at all. That's a good job. Guys, you see how his head was constantly turning? Checking the runner, seeing the ball, checking the runner, seeing the ball. The runner is going to help. I mean, he's determining where you go in that situation. We've got to know where the ball is, but we, we need to know the status of the runner at all times. That was good. And then and look where he ended up. He trailed that runner right into the same position you'd take a steal play from, looking right through the window to see the tag. <laughs> guys where yeah so in that situation the next possible play is the throw getting past the first baseman and then coming back towards second base and that means that we can be a little bit more aggressive towards the outside of second base yeah now you've got to you've got to do that yeah you're out he's in You've got to do that realizing that you don't have third base covered, okay? Our plate umpire is going toward first base and he's not going to cover behind you at third base. So if you're going to take a play on, after that overthrow into second base and you want to be aggressive and take it from the outside, you better realize that if they throw it away again, you have to re respond very quickly to that to get inside and ahead toward third base. And what I usually do on those plays when I know that my back is not covered but I want to be aggressive with my positioning is, if I, I, I don't take that aggressive spot until I know that the ball is a true throw that's going to be caught. If it's, a, if it's something that's going to short hop the fielder and there's a likelihood of it getting passed, then I'm going to adjust you know, back towards the inside to protect myself for the possible play at third. But if it's a true throw that he's going to catch, now the ball's not getting away. He's going to catch the ball. So I might as well take the best possible position to see the play. So that's, that's when you know you can be aggressive, when it's a true throw. So our starting position here by our first baseman, um, we do have a runner on first, but since the first baseman is playing deep, we need to give him room to make a play on a fair foul. Not a bad job. Not a bad job. Back to our conversation about starting position as the third base umpire with R1 or any situation where we're inside, you can't use something like the grass dirt line or the cutout to dictate where you stand because the grass dirt line and the cutout are different on every field you're going to work on. So if you, stay, if you say, oh, I take one step uh, in from the grass dirt line, on Monday, that's going to put you in one position, and on Tuesday, it's going to be a different one. Your position should be relative to second base. That's what we use. You do a wonderful job. Oh, thank you. I certainly do appreciate it.